Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and with iOS 26, Apple introduced a new design language, many different changes throughout the OS. And if you're not finding that you're enjoying it, maybe you're having too many bugs or you just prefer iOS 18, I wanted to show you how to downgrade from iOS 26 to iOS 18 without losing any data. I'll walk you through step-by-step step and show you what it's like along the way and what it's like once you're downgraded to iOS 18. Now, the first thing is you'll need a computer to downgrade. You'll need a computer with iTunes on Windows or Finder on the Mac. That will allow you to downgrade directly on your device, but you will need a computer for now. If you don't have a computer, you can bring it to an Apple store and they can help you downgrade there if you'd like to do that. In the future, we may have a recovery assistant that allows you to do that with an iPad or iPhone, but it's not currently available. If it does become available, I'll make a separate video showing that as well. Now, before we downgrade, I wanted to caution you that if you don't have a backup, you'll probably want one of those as we actually are going to wipe the device completely. We'll remove all the data off of it, except for the eSIM. If you're using an eSIM that will stay on the device unless you actually choose to remove it yourself. So typically when you restore the device or wipe the device, it will not remove the eSIM and we'll show you that a little bit later. So just be aware that we are going to wipe the device entirely and then bring data back onto it. Now, before we get started, you'll want to back up your data. Now, if you're already on iOS 18 or you were before, hopefully you made a backup using either iCloud or iTunes. If you haven't done that already, I would recommend doing that even on iOS 26, just in case you're having problems on iOS 18, you can always restore back to iOS 26 or update to it and then restore a backup from there. Again, you can do that in iTunes, or you can do that by going into your settings, go to your name at the top, scroll down to where it says iCloud, and then about halfway down, we have iCloud Backup. Go into iCloud Backup, and then tap Backup Now. You will need to have additional storage available. If you don't have that, you can get that from Apple, or you, again, can use a computer, plug it into iTunes or Finder on a Mac, and backup directly to the Mac or your Windows computer. So once this is completed, we'll then continue. The backup completed one second ago, and one of the things that's great about if you're using Save to iCloud, if you're just syncing iCloud data, anything that's here can be restored even without a backup. So things using the backup will be your app layout, maybe some of your settings, but if you don't have a backup from previous updates, anything such as photos, iCloud Drive, notes, mail, and even third-party apps that are synced to iCloud or saved to iCloud can restore their information. So Mercury Weather is the widget on the home screen that can restore its information. If you're using WhatsApp and sync it to iCloud, all of that will come back to any version that you're using once you enable it. So these can just sync back and forth and it makes things very easy, but make sure you have that iCloud backup. Now, in order to get started, the easiest way to do this is just put your phone in restore mode. In order to do that, the fastest way to do it is turn off the phone. We can do that by tapping on the button here in control center. So press on it and then we can slide to power off. Give it just a moment to turn off there. So it will turn off. And once it's shut down, all we need to do is plug in our USB-C cable or whatever cable we have, depending on our iPhone to our Mac or Windows computer. Go ahead and plug it in, press and hold the power sleep wake button and keep holding it and continue to hold it until you see it go into recovery mode. So we'll keep holding it just like this. You'll see it will boot into recovery mode and I'll show you in real time. And there we go. This allows you to actually recover it on your Mac or windows computer. Now, maybe you changed your mind and you don't want to recover your phone. At this point, you can actually go back to your home screen without losing any data. In order to do that, just simply unplug it. Then all you'll do is press volume up, volume down, and then press and hold the power sleep wake button. So let me show you that. So volume up, volume down, press and hold power sleep wake. We'll keep holding it. The phone will turn off here in just a moment. And once it reboots and we see the Apple logo, we can let go of the button. So continue to hold just like this. Again, it's going to reboot here in just a moment. We see the Apple logo, let go, and it will boot up just like normal. So again, give it just a moment here to continue booting. And then we'll be back to the home screen and it will be back to where you were before and you don't have to restore. So if you want to get out of restoring, that's one way you can do that. But again, we'll wait for this to finish booting up. There we go, slide up, we'll put in our passcode, and now we're back to our home screen.
So again, let's go into recovery mode and you can see this is iOS 26 currently. If we go to general software update, give it a moment, you'll see that we're on the latest version. So it says iOS 26, it's up to date. Let's go ahead and go back into recovery mode. So I'll shut it back down and enter recovery mode so we can continue. Now that we're in recovery mode, let's go back to our computer and in the Mac, we'll click on finder if we don't already have it up on the screen. And once you're in the finder, go ahead and click on iPhone on the left. Once you click on iPhone, you may get a message just like this that says there is a problem with the iPhone that requires it to be updated or restored. You can actually click restore right from here and it will begin the restore process. If you bypass this message, so if I canceled it by accident, you'll get the same message here where you can restore the iPhone. So let's go ahead and click on restore. We'll do that. And then we can click restore and update. So this will actually download iOS 18's latest version and restore it to the phone. We will have to agree to the terms and click next through the actual setup. So we'll go ahead and agree here and then it will begin downloading. Now this will vary depending on your overall internet connection and how fast you can download, but we'll start and take a look at it to see how long this takes once it's finished downloading. But this can take seconds, like it says 70 seconds remaining, or it could take 20 to 30 minutes or longer depending on your internet speed. Once it finishes downloading, it's now 112. So we'll keep that in mind. It's 112. It's going to extract the software and then install it on the iPhone. So let's see how long it takes. It will then prepare the iPhone for restore and it will reboot the phone. Don't be alarmed if the iPhone reboots a couple different times throughout the process. It will then verify the iPhone restore with Apple and you'll see the progress bar move on the iPhone as well. Now on the screen, it says your iPhone has been restored to factory settings and it's restarting. Please leave your iPhone connected and it will appear in the sidebar after it restarts. So it's restarting now after it restored everything and we'll see how long it takes once it boots up, but it doesn't take too long to restore everything about six minutes or so. So from 112 to 118, of course it will take longer to restore more data. We'll talk about that in a moment once it reboots, but it's still rebooting here. We'll give it a second and you may see this actually reboot a little bit a few times and see this progress bar a couple different times as well. So the initial restore is quick, but it may have to reboot multiple times after that. So you'll see the iPhone is locked to owner and it took me about eight minutes to restore that. Of course, it's going to vary depending on your phone and what you're connected to as far as the Mac or Windows computer, but in general, it shouldn't take too long to do the initial restore. Now, because I didn't turn off find my and put in my password, I can do that a little bit later in just a moment. It's going to say that it's locked. So let's go ahead and slide up. Now I can set this up manually. I can disconnect the power connector or the USB-C cable, go to English, go to United States or wherever you reside. And I can either go through this manually or to speed this up, I can bring in another iPhone and get it set up. So I'll bring in my other iPhone here. We'll bring it nearby. Then I can go ahead and scan this just like this get them connected and get it set up much more quickly than I could if I went through it manually. But if you don't want to do that, you can go through this step-by-step -step on your own, put in your password and everything else. Once it's connected, it will ask you for the passcode of your other iPhone or device, and then it will say setting up your phone. So that will attach it to your account and unlock it as well if it's already locked. So even if you didn't have your password there and you had a different device already on your account, it will just unlock it. So it will take just a few minutes to activate. We'll give it a second. Now it's asking me to to unlock the phone. It may do this. It may not, depending on how you did this. Once you've put in your username and password, it will then allow it to unlock. And this is where I was talking about the eSIM before. So you can transfer from another phone or set it up later in settings, but it doesn't forget the eSIM if it's ever had one, or you can transfer from another phone at this point. I'll set it up later in settings though. Then we'll have to continue through data and privacy. Give it a second to continue there. And then it will have us set up face ID again or touch ID, depending on the device. So there we go. First scan complete. And then you can choose to use a mask or not. So we'll go ahead and go to the next setting here. And it says face ID is now set up. We'll tap continue. 
Now this is the part where you'll want to restore your data. You'll see it says transfer your data from iCloud, which is that backup, or you can transfer it from a phone that's nearby, but you would need another phone. Since we did that backup, we'll download from iCloud, but you have other options as well. If you don't want to set it up at all, you can go to your other options. It will say setting up your account and I'll show you that here. Now, if you choose other options, you can again, restore from iCloud, from another iPhone, from a Mac or PC. So if you restored it or backed it up to a Mac, you can do that from an Android phone or don't transfer anything if you prefer to set it up as new. We'll restore from an iCloud backup. So we'll give it just a moment so we can choose one here. And you'll see we have a few different options. The one we backed up prior to restoring this says today, iOS 26 required. So just keep that in mind since we're on iOS 18, but you'll see here's a bunch of different options we have where we could restore from any of these devices, whether it's this one or a different one. Once you've selected your backup, you can see here, it says, make this your new iPhone. And then you could either select the apps and data or just have everything restored. Like you wanted before you can even customize it, but we'll just tap continue. So give it a moment to configure and then it will begin to restore. And again, this can take a little bit of time depending on your overall internet connection. Now, if you're in a region that supports Apple intelligence, you can set this up now or set it up later. We can tap continue for camera control. If you have an iPhone 16 or 16 pro model. So it's going to walk you through being able to use that button just like you were setting it up for the first time. So we'll have to just give it a moment here. Then we have Siri options. We can set up later emergency SOS. And then it says restore from iCloud. This will give you an estimate that typically isn't very accurate, but we'll give it just a moment to see what it says. And currently it says it's 128. So at the time of this video, 128, we'll see how long this takes. But again, this is dependent on your internet connection, what kind of Wi-Fi you have and much more. So if you have a ton of data, this could take hours. If you don't have a lot, it could take minutes or depending on your internet connection, it could be very, very fast or slow. It started to restore and it says about 10 minutes. Now this can vary greatly depending on how much data you actually have to restore, whether that's 10 gigabytes or 500 gigabytes, that's going to vary greatly depending on the overall time, but it's currently 1:30. Let's see how long it takes to restore. It says about 10 minutes, but this can vary greatly again, based on many different factors from internet connection to overall data amount. It took seven minutes for the restore to initially complete. Then it reboots the phone and then continues to restore. So this again could take a few more minutes and bring us back to the home screen. The phone is rebooted. Let's go ahead and unlock it here. So it says restore complete apps and data will continue downloading in the background. We'll tap continue and it should bring us to the home screen. We'll swipe up to get started and we have the apps in the original layout we had. It's going to ask up, ask us to set up cellular. If we haven't before we'll tap not now, and now it's going to restore apps. So you'll see there's quite a few apps here that it's going to restore and this could take additional time as well as syncing things such as photos. So if we go to settings, you'll see here, it says restore in progress and estimated 6.8 gigabytes will be downloaded to finish restoring your apps and data. So again, depending on how much data you need to restore, it could be 50 gigabytes, could be 250 gigabytes. That's going to depend on your internet connection and then it will process in the background, but it will restore everything. So again, it's taken so far about 10 minutes or so since we started the initial restore, we'll let everything restore and then we'll continue once it's done. Now everything's been fully restored. If we go under settings, you'll see it says iPhone successfully restored from iCloud. You can see backup settings or tap done. So everything's been restored. We have a complete iOS 26 to iOS 18 downgrade and restoration. So everything's been restored from photos. So if we go into photos, you'll see if I scroll up, it may have to look through different photos to get memories, but you'll see everything from pinned collections is there, other photos, recent days, and everything else will be here. The same is true. If we go under music, you'll see all of the same recently added, go under playlists. All of your playlists are here. All of your messages have been restored along with all the photos that were with those or any attachments, email accounts, as well as third party apps. So if maybe you're using WhatsApp or maybe you're using TikTok, all of that information will restore with the exception of maybe passwords. So you'll see the apps are here, but maybe you'll need to input your password depending on the overall app, Instagram, Gmail, or Google, TikTok, and others may require you to put in your password again, but all of your data should be here as long as it was synced with iCloud or you restored.
So hopefully that helps you restore everything. And you'll see here, if we go into settings, we go to general and then we go to software update and you'll see iOS 18.5 and it will restore back to whatever the latest version is. So maybe it's iOS 18.6. By the time you're watching this, it will restore to whatever version is the most current as it's allowed or signed. Now the whole process took about an hour total, depending on the overall data. Of course, that's going to vary. It could take an hour, hour and a half. Sometimes it can take eight hours, but usually the initial setup restore and back to your home screen is much quicker. It just takes a long time to restore everything in settings and all of your different apps. So hopefully that helped you restore back from iOS 26 and downgrade down to iOS 18. Let me know if that helped you in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.